Well, thanks for joining us for another session of our community group's video at The Pursuit. Please make sure you check out the discussion guide that goes along with this video. You can find that linked in the description. But as you can see, it definitely looks and feels like the holiday season. North Dakota has been hit with snow. The stockings are hung. My family decided to put up the Christmas tree and decorations. But before Christmas, in just a bit, we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving. It's a time that's wonderful to gather with family and friends, just to be deliberate, to stop, and to give thanks to God for all the amazing blessings that He has given us. However, for so many, this Thanksgiving holiday has sadly, it's lost its focus about what it's supposed to be about, and it's been repackaged as an opportunity to usher in this official beginning of the greatest shopping season of all. And for many, this becomes the time of year to focus on all that we don't have. You know, we, we look for all of the different things that we desire to, to purchase, something new to replace the things that we already have, even if those things we have are still perfectly fine. We do this from small things like new clothes to slightly more expensive items like new phones or TVs to larger things like new cars. And you guys know this, that... That type of attitude and practice of buying things to replace perfectly good things, well, it often leads to poor outcomes. Outcomes such as credit card debt, little to no savings, no financial margins, inability to be generous with giving even if you desire to be generous. All this speaks to a problem so many of us really have. It's a problem of discontentment. See, we become discontent with the things we have versus the things that we could have Oddly enough, often we think this problem would just be solved if we only had a little bit more money. You know, and you've maybe been there, and if you haven't, you, you likely will be one day, but you'll look at your bank account, and you'll determine that if you only had just even another $1,000, you'd be so much better. Or if you could bring home another $200 a week, uh, uh, each paycheck, well, then not only would your problems be solved, you'd, start, you'd be able to start tithing and, and be able to give to that charity that you want to. Or if you just had another $5,000 a year salary, and then, then the world would be so much better. In short, our focus clearly becomes money. And throughout that process, money or the pursuit of money becomes our priority. And when the pursuit of money becomes our focus, we end up being willing to do things for it, often at the expense of something or someone else. And the Apostle Paul, he explained some of this when he wrote a letter to Timothy. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Paul gives a warning here that we all should heed. There's a snare or a trap for individuals who are driven by a pursuit of more money. The, result are, the results are suddenly making senseless and harmful decisions that produce a plunge into ruin and destruction. Maybe it sounds harsh, and the reality is that ruin and destruction, that plunge there into that, it often isn't immediate. It's usually it's a process and a slow reveal. The reveal may result in a realization that all those years that you prioritized your work just so that you could earn a little bit more, that you could, in order to purchase those other things, you prioritized your work over spending time with your family. Maybe that was instead of attending your child's sporting event or concert or whatever important thing it was to them. Instead of attending that, you prioritized your work. And you, you maybe legitimized that in your own mind, and maybe even you sold it to the rest of your family that the reason you needed to do that to work is to take care of your family. And isolated on its own, that may be fine for a time or two or a few, but if it's a habitual practice, your family is unlikely to continue to extend grace to you. See, it's human nature to be hurt and not feel loved if you're not prioritized. And the message that you are sending is that your money is more important than it is than your family is to you. And over time, you discover that you've fallen into a trap. There's all kinds of traps that you can fall into centered around the pursuit of money, especially, especially when we have an eye attuned to what else we could have. But Paul gave guidance as to what we should pursue. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Paul gives instructions and clarity on what should be our chief pursuits in lieu of, purchase, uh, of pursuing money and riches and possessions. He said you need to pursue things like righteousness, godliness, faith, and love. Paul is explaining that when you pursue the same characteristics of God, our Lord who is righteous, he is faithful, he is loving. 
Paul said that when you seek to be more like God, you will begin to see the world differently, which will allow you to begin to be more content with what you have and more importantly, content with what you don't have. And within this idea of seeking to be more like God, it requires you to have a relationship with your Lord Jesus Christ. It is in that type of relationship that, that David describes in Psalm 23 in which you know your Lord in the way that a sheep knows their shepherd, somebody who lives with and sleeps beside their flock, somebody that leads their flock to green pastures, still waters. It's in that type of relationship that if you know your Lord in such a way, not only will you begin to view the world like God does, you will begin to behave in God-like ways. And in doing so, like David said in Psalm 23, just like him, you will also be able to say, I shall not want. All this points to what Paul opened up to the topic of his letter with, with Timothy. But godliness with contentment is great gain. But what happens is when we pursue God-like attributes, attributes that place other people and other people's needs above our own desires, not only will we learn to be content, it will produce great gain. Now, before we finish, please be aware that our Life on Loan series, we will after that, we will take the month of December off from our group's videos. Don't worry, we'll be back in January with new videos each week. So I hope that you and your group, you have great conversations about this topic, our video today, and Utilize the discussion guide that, to help you go deeper into these ideas. And as always, don't forget to take time to pray together as a group.